You have probably come here in order to find out the purpose of a determinant of a matrix in your day-to-day -day life. The determinant of a matrix just gives you an idea of how big the object under consideration which the matrix is trying to represent is as compared to a unit cube or a unit square. A unit cube of whatever you are dealing with will have a determinant as 1. Similarly, a unit square will have a determinant also as 1. So let's say the matrix that you're considering has got a determinant now of 2. This means that whatever you're considering under a matrix format is twice that in volume or in surface area of that of a unit cube or a unit square. If it's a 3 by 3 matrix, you are dealing with uh, a 3D object. So most probably you're dealing with a 3D object and it is compared, the determinant will be compared to that of a unit cube. If it's a 2 by 2 matrix, most probably you are dealing with a two dimensional object. So its determinant is relative to that of a unit square. Determinant of a unit square and a unit cube will always be one. And the determinant of the matrix that you're considering is a relative uh, volume or relative surface area. One way to look at the determinant, the way I look at it is how many times the matrix that you're dealing with or the object that it is representing, its volume or surface area is that is how many times it is that of a unit cube or a unit square. But there is another way to look at these determinants that is to see them as a ratio of the volume or the surface area of the matrix under consideration divided by the volume or the surface area of a unit cube or a unit square. Which one is the right format? I do not know. Now just look at these matrices that you have in front of your screen. The first matrix on the leftmost corner is that of a unit matrix. So its volume or its determinant uh, is one, it's a unit cube, which is made out of matchsticks. Now look at the second matrix that you have in front of yourself. This one is also made of matchsticks, but its volume is increased and that is represented in the matrix. The Y component, that is the, downmo the downmost row that you have here, uh, it has become two. And that is what it represents that it has become twice. The determinant when it is taken, it becomes twice that of a unit cube. Now look at the third matrix that you have in front of you. This is also the same cube, which is made out of matchsticks. The dimensions of the third cube is same the third uh, structure that you have is same as that of the second structure. But if you look at the matrix, the parameters that is put into the matrix are different. But the determinant is the same because the volume is the same. So what has changed? The answer is the coordinates have changed. I'll explain this in another video on how to plot a matrix uh, onto a coordinate axis that will be a topic for another video but uh, even if the numbers are very big like 21 and 22 if you are having a determinant equals to 1 that means uh, what you're dealing with is something which is very small it's just that 21 and 22 are the points on the axis where this structure is hanging 21 and 22, the parameters, if these are the numbers being filled inside a matrix, they do not represent the size. I'm just giving instead of 1 and 2 in these matrices, let's say it is 21 and 22. They don't represent the size, they represent where the matrix is placed onto the coordinate axis. That is at 21 on the x-axis, 22 on the y-axis, 
it extends from 21 to 22 that is the dimension then it might actually be a unit cube it can be 100 and 101 and so on but placing these coordinates depending on the parameters that would be a topic for another video <coughs> what if there is one ebook which explains complex numbers to you as a rotation that is i raised to 1 equals to a rotation by 90 degrees i square as a rotation by 180 degree i cube as a rotation by 270 degree and i raised to 4 as a full as a full rotation by 360 degrees what if this ebook told you that sign of any angle is a representative of how much perpendicular two forces influence or objects are and that is why sine 90 is maximum but sine 30 reduces to half because at 30 degree if a ball is hit on a wall its impact will reduce to half of that impact when the ball is made to hit the wall at 90 degrees what if this ebook told you that cos of a number any angle is a measure of how much parallel two forces or, inf or influences are that complex conjugates are nothing but vertically opposite mirror images of each other that is 3 plus 4i and 3 minus 4i are just vertically opposite mirror images of each other that the transpose of a matrix is nothing but the entire matrix rotated by 180 degree about its diagonal as the axis the links to these ebooks is given in the description section there's visualizing math 1 visualizing math 2 and an intuitive guide to quantum physics called as quantum leaps all of them are available in the ebook format you can contribute to my mission of helping the world visualize concepts of math and physics in an intuitive manner by joining a site called as analogyseeker.com which is created by me with the help of a friend of mine on analogyseeker.com you can ask a question and expect analogies and simple examples to explain it from others for example the analogy to explain the working of a capacitor is to compare its working to a dam. Just as a dam stores water up till a certain threshold and then after that releases it in a flood, a similar thing is done by capacitors. They store electricity, block them like a traffic police and when they release them, they release it in one flash. This is the reason why a capacitor is used in the flash of your cameras. It's, they store electricity for some time and after a certain threshold release all of them to help the flash. To help the flash produce the enormous amount of light that it requires for a short time. There's a reason it's called as a flash. It's a flood of electrons flowing through the filament and this happens due to the capacitor. If you wish to learn such concepts through analogies or teach others such concepts, share such analogies with others, a give and take of such analogies and examples to help understand complex concepts of mathematics. Do consider searching for analogyseeker.com and joining it. Unlike other sites like Cora, which don't help you when you post something, when you share something, they don't allow you to post ads, they don't allow you to share links of your own blog. At analogyseeker.com, you can share a relevant link, a blog, or even put Google ads for your answers and gain money through it. So on one side, you can help and still earn money.